Well, that was a pretty horrible last 10, 15 minutes to watch. I tell you that. I'm just so used to Manchester United letting me down in those moments where we need to control the last 15 minutes of a game. I wouldn't say we particularly controlled the last 15 minutes of that game there, but we came away with a hard fought, gritty, fighting 1 0 win there against Southampton. Thanks for a stunning goal from Bruno. Lots of talking points, far from a perfect performance, so much that still needs to be built on. But to win away from home for the first time in seven games, to keep a clean sheet, to see Martinez mm, playing like he did there, oh my, we needed that. To build on the Liverpool game, we had to turn up there today against Southampton. It, as I say, far from a complete performance. We didn't control anywhere near as much of that game as we should have done, and I will run through that. But to get that fighting win is huge. The biggest thing of today, cracking away end, loud anti-glazer chance. The message is loud and clear and it will continue to go. So fair play to every single United fan who, who, who did it, got involved. Keep doing it. Keep fighting the fight. Speaking of fighting the fight. Mm, Jamie Carragher, where are you, my friend? Where are you? Jeez, I sound like Delia Smith. Shouldn't have done that. Anyway, Lissandro Martinez, after a shaky game against Brentford, man of the match against Liverpool, man of the match there against Southampton. And Southampton went for him. Playing down the left-hand side, targeting Malasia and Martinez, but they kept getting swatted away time after time after time. This is a different feeling that you've got towards this United team. That this United team, you know, they might have a little bit of backbone. They can. And they have just there. They've seen out a 1-0 win. A little bit of backs against the wall. Petchy at times. But Martinez and Malasia, they... they it's something we haven't seen before. Normally, this that team will crumble in those moments, but we didn't. And the man who came up with a moment of quality today that changed it, really, was Bruno, man. What a fantastic finish. What a fantastic goal. Good movement on the right-hand side. I think it was a Langer and Delo. Nice pass into Delo, into space. Lovely cross. Wasn't just It's one of those crosses we saw in the preseason. Rather than just fire it in without looking, his head was up. He saw Bruno on the edge, passed it straight to him, and what a finish. Not an easy finish in any way, shape, or form. Side-footed, volley into the... Mm. And they'll, they'll be honest, there wasn't really too many moments of real quality in that game from United. We had a lot of the ball sometimes, and then uh, no ball other times. We, we had control. I don't think we really had too much control of that game. The midfield. Speaking about Matomane in a bit, I'll speak about Eriksen in a bit. But I can't not speak about Casemiro coming on. When he came on there, I didn't, I didn't say it out loud, but I, it gave me a little bit more confidence. That we could see out that 1-0 win. And we, I cannot wait to see him start week in, week out for this club. You can see with Mar, we, look, with Casemiro there, with Martinez there, with Malasia, it's a different profile and type of player we're bringing into the squad. It's obvious what we've lacked. Spine, a backbone. Term, wait, we have determination. We've just not been good enough. With Casemiro coming on the end, he didn't do too much, but he didn't need to. Just help the team, give them the ball, keep recycling possession. Won a couple of headers. That's all we needed to do to see the game out. And I was very happy that he came on. Now, if I was looking at that midfield in that game, I think there's two major talking points that we've got to have. And they're two very, very different talking points. Let me prepare them here. First of all, this man, Christian Eriksen, looked pretty exhausted when he went off there towards the end. And I don't think he came to Manchester United with any real intention of playing 90 minutes week in, week out. He was the supplementary signing. But because of the De Jong situation, he's effectively stepping in for De Jong. Ten Hag's going to have to manage him carefully. I don't think we can be playing him for 75 minutes, 90 minutes, week in, week out, every three, four days. That's just not possible. But Ericsson there was the man who was creating something from deep, progressing from deep. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens when Casemiro comes on behind him. Because let's be completely honest. Two very, very different sides to that, Mato that Matomane performance there. On the positive side, I think he was put into that team by Eric Ten Hag to sort of stop the Southampton aerial threat. And I think he did that pretty well. Out of possession, I think Matomane was a decent defender for Manchester United today. In possession, it's a completely different ball game. Eriksen was the only one progressing it from deep. And Matomane was invisible quite a lot of the time. And that is where I'm hoping... Oh, look, Casemiro is not known for that, but he's certainly better at it and Scott McTominay. And that was a big area where we were weak today. Massive area. It's why we kept looking to Ericsson to sort of progress the ball forwards. Because McTominay, simply put, doesn't have that in his locker. McTominay, 
is good for for games like Liverpool it, it, in in performances where you can get G'd up behind the ground. There's a lot of emotion and tenacity. It's where he thrives. But in a game where you need a little bit more technical prowess, you've got to break through low blocks. That's not where you're going to get the best out of Scott McTominay going forward. But from a defensive standpoint, I thought he did the job that Ten Hag wanted him to do today. I think Ten Hag will probably be happy with his overall performance and the fact that we won 1-0 and we got a clean sheet. I'll tell you who else played very well today. Diago Delo. Still has so many critics. Shaky performances so far. I thought him and Martial were the two players who really took to Ten Hag's system the quickest in preseason. And that was a cracking cross for Bruno. But it wasn't just that. He had a tough time down the right-hand side. Busy a lot of the game. I think he did pretty damn well for the majority, if not the whole game. Fair play to Diogo Delo. Yeah, if I'm being completely honest, I don't particularly think that Anthony Langer had a good game in any way, shape or form. And I would put that in the same category as I would put Scott McTominay. In a game like Liverpool, where you're playing with the intense press, you're using the pace, you're using that enthusiasm, the youthful legs of Elanga, it's where you're going to get the most out of him. But I don't think in a game where you need a little bit of technical prowess, look, right, this is why we're going after Anthony. That performance there from Elanga shows exactly why we're going after Anthony. Put Anthony there on the right-hand side, United would have had a hell of a lot more going forward. Without, with Elanga there and with Rashford, uh, I'll be honest, Manchester United's just our front three there today. Sancho too. They lacked creativity because we've got such a mobile, fluid front three. No one was really in the box at any one point. And then when Cristiano Ronaldo came on, uh, it was a sad indictment, really. That little part where the ball went over the top and Ronaldo got caught. I mean, he's 37. We can't expect Ronaldo to be 20, 30 yards away from goal. And kind of make things happen on his own. Now, that's what we've grown up on. That's the that's the diet of Ronaldo that we feasted on as Manchester United fans. Ronaldo, we need to get him in the box. Let him stay in the box. Be that goal poacher because he will score left, right and centre. But Ronaldo coming off the bench there to try and do the runs in behind. To try, that's, that's not his game. And that never will be his game. But unfortunately, that's the Ten Hag style. But that's where the juxtaposition comes with Ronaldo. I don't know whether that was the last performance of Ronaldo. I don't particularly see how in the next four to five days he finds a club to go to. Surely he would have found that club by now. That's why I think so anyway. But, oh man, that was a nervy, nervy last few minutes. But I love this bloke. I knew as soon as we signed him that I could see myself now sort of going towards him and sort of that. He's probably going to be my favourite player come the end of the season. And these two performances against Liverpool, two very different games. That game at Old Trafford where the, the crowd was G'd up, United were pressing, cheering every tackle. The energy was, in, was infectious and it rubbed off onto the players and they used that as fuel for the win. That there today against Southampton, Southampton had a game plan. They went after Martinez and Malisea and it didn't work. When that didn't work, they didn't really know what to do. In the second half, they didn't really offer that much of a threat. A couple of decent opportunities, set pieces where they're real dangerous with James Ward-Prowse. But Man United had enough today. We had enough with Martinez leading by example. Bruno with a fantastic moment of quality. The real only, let's be completely honest, the only real outstanding moment of quality we had going for. But it's all, the, it's all we need. If you're good enough defensively, you only need one goal. It's just that we've, over the years, we just got so used to being let down in these situations where we've got a 1-0 lead. But we didn't do it today. Seeing that man come off the bench, it filled me with a bit. I'm sure the players felt like, right, cool, we've got this now. Casemiro's on. I'm sure he would have had that sort of impact. Can't wait to see him start. And he should be starting against Leicester. Absolutely. Eric's and I fear for what we're going to do this season. Because he basically needs to play every game. Without him, I don't know what we do in terms of progressing the ball from deep. But he can't play every game. I don't know how that's going to be managed. McTominay, as I said, strengths were his defensive side of his game. The weaknesses, we know what it was. It left uh, Eriksen sort of to do everything in midfield, progressing the ball forward. Because McTominay doesn't have it in his game. The low, decent from him. Ilanga, we've spoken about him. And Ronaldo, I mean, let's see what happens in the next few days. But I've got to focus, as I say, finish on Martinez. Summed everything up was his performance. Look, two wins in a row. Beating Liverpool, beating Southampton. We said we had to build on the, on the Liverpool win. Go and do that. A gritty, four, hard-fought win, that was. Far from perfect. So much to improve on. But three points and a clean sheet. Six points from the last two games after losing the first two. That's a recovery. That's the players responding. Leicester next.